welcome to the lecture number 68 so we have been discussing about the magnetic satellite uh, attitude control using magnetic actuator so uh, satellite attitude control can also be done using the lorentz force so uh, this technology still has not been developed and we have been working in this area so uh, i will introduce you to that also and uh, proof of the stability and other things it remains the same as it is in the case of the magnetic attitude control okay so uh, let us uh, start with this and uh, for the magnetic attitude control uh, we will uh, satellite okay so uh, magnetic field in the orbit it can be described as this is orbit inclination okay so you can use this model this is the model of the magnetic field in the orbital frame in our work we have used data from the isro so uh, and the quantity gamma bar it will be given by limit t tends to infinity So we can take zero to t, or from certain interval to infinity. Also, it can go. But one thing remember uh, that whatever we are doing here, writing this is equally applicable to the satellite attitude control using Lorentz force, and also to the satellite attitude control using magnetic torques. So, in both the cases, this particular part it will remain the same. and this quantity will be given by cos square i m plus 1 by 2 and 5 by 2 
sin square i m. So, this data can be utilized uh, whenever you are trying to model. So, you can utilize this data. So, this formula you can utilize instead of data you can use the formula you can generate the field in the orbit and uh, use it for the control purpose. Now, uh, so what I was telling that uh, using the Lorentz force satellite attitude control it follows exactly the same principle only difference will lie in the torque generated. Okay, so, uh, our the equation of motion remains the same. Now, here the gravity gradient remains same there is no difference in this then this is the instead of magnetic moment now we, we will have the Lorentz force. So, this will write as T q this is due to to indicate this is charge due to the charge. and then of course, we will have the T disturbance. So, this is the equation of motion and then you have Q tilde equal to R Q tilde times omega tilde R. So, this is what we have uh, written last time. So, this constitutes your dynamics and kinematics. Okay. Now, consider that some satellite is going in the orbit and here this is the center of the earth and it is going in the orbit on this side v is the velocity. So, any charge which is placed in a magnetic field and moving with v it experiences a force d f equal to say the charge is d q. Okay. So, d q times v cross b where v is the velocity of the charge. and B is the magnetic field at the location of charge. Okay, so, you can assume that there is a charge here in this place and it is a line at a distance r uh, this is the vector from the center of the mass of the satellite to this place. Now, we can show it by some other color. So, center of mass to this place this is your d q charge is located okay. and it is a moving with velocity v. So, we will take the same velocity as that of the center of mass. So, v equal to v center of mass. Okay. Though the satellite is rotating with angular velocity omega a small correction, correction can be added, but that does not matter much. So, for simplicity we can take it this way. So, the torque acting on the charge this will be given by or we can write it as d t due to q. d t q will be then r cross d q time v cross b. So, if we consider we have another charge here in this place with opposite sign. Okay. So, your force on the charge will be given by the rule v cross b whatever the direction of v is there. and whatever the direction of b is there. So, it, it will be perpendicular to both of them. So, if we have a negative charge here in this place 
say minus d q here in this place. So, just a opposite force will be experienced in this place and that will create these two together will create this one suppose this is acting here and this is acting here. Okay. So, these two will form a couple. So, this way we can have along the all three axis of the satellite a cell or plate on which the charge is distributed. Okay. So, if we take that then the total let us write it this way uh, d t q along all the three axis. So, I will not tag it I will keep it the same way. So, I will write here on this plane due to all the charges on different plate slash cell. Okay, so, one is plus another is minus. So, they are in opposite direction. So, for them we can assume that the say one is located in R x direction. So, this will be R x cross d q v cross b and another one is located here in the minus r x direction. So, minus r x cross d q v cross b and we have to put a put a minus sign here in this place to indicate this is the negative charge. Okay. So, therefore, this becomes gets a plus sign the same way we can write for y axis and z axis and if we add all of them. So, this appears as distance between this axis along the x axis between this d q charge distance between the y axis uh, distance along the y axis between the charges and similarly along the z axis. So, this d t q then we can write as let us say that the total distance is somewhat this is d along the x axis times i cap okay. and d q which is multiplied there we will bring this d q here in this place and this is along the x axis. So, d q x times distance along the x axis these two can be added together. Okay. So, r x r x this two r x magnitude wise we can write it as d x this is the distance between these two points and i cap this is the unit vector along the x axis. So, same way we will have and then v cross b. Okay. So, v cross b we can take it outside and here then d q y d y times j cap and d q z d z times k cap and we take v cross b outside because it is a common to all of them. Okay. Integrate it. So, if we integrate over the whole body Okay. and uh, so this can be replaced as q x times distance along the x axis which is the here in this case you can consider it to be the center of the charge okay. times i cap plus d q y q y. So, we should put a uh, another notation here for this uh, maybe we can use c q y times c y j cap plus q z times c z 
k cap v cross p. Here this is r cross is also there. So, we have uh, cross sign will appear here in this place. Okay. So, this quantity from here to here we call this as the moment of the charge and we write as this as the m capital M. So, moment of the charge cross v cross b and this becomes T due to the charge or simply we write this as the charge moment. So, now it can be easily observed that if this is the B vector and uh, say in this direction we have v vector. So, v cross b. Okay. So, it will lie perpendicular to both of them okay. and then the vector m. So, uh, we will make a plane rather. Let us say this is the B and V is here in this direction. So, V cross B it will lie here in this plane. This is V cross B. And if M is another vector here, so M cross V cross B. So, this will be perpendicular to both of them. So, somewhere as you can see that this is lying out of the plane, m is lying out of this plane, this is okay. so perpendicular to this one v cross b and perpendicular to m also. Okay. So, so, we have to look for that particular direction where it is going to lie. So, accordingly it can be located. Now, uh, another thing we can see that whenever v cross b this is parallel to m the torque vanishes or either whenever v is parallel to b then also the torque vanishes. However, in the case of the magnetic torquer there the torque was given by m cross b. So, it, it was vanishing only when m is parallel to b, but here there are two conditions when the velocity vector becomes parallel to b or the magnetic moment of the charge or the charge moment it becomes parallel to v cross b then also it will vanish. So, these two cases make it uh, more constrained ok. Here in this case this becomes more constrained as compared to this one ok. As compared to the magnetic one. So, we have the torque then we can write as so T q or this is the coulombic or T q we can write it this way this is T coulombic. So, this we can write as already we have written m cross v cross b. Now, let u be the or u tilde you can write in terms of u tilde also u tilde be the required slash desired torque. Generated by the control algorithm. Okay. 
so from there how much m is required we can find it out so we have let us write this quantity m cross v cross b uh, we can designate this as another vector it's in fact simple you can assume your own vector notation uh, i have used a notation whatever the notation i have used i will tell you about that okay but before that let me simplify and put this in the matrix format so that we can do the matrix pseudo inverse okay. so t tilde this due to the coulomb charges or the due to the electric charges this will become minus v cross b cross m okay and this quantity we can write as s v cross b here from this place to this place it can be already we have used this this is the skew symmetric matrix so if v cross b we put as in the note let us make this as some right now a vector suppose this i write as s p tilde and this is m tilde okay. so p tilde is your v cross b p1 p2 p3 and s p tilde then this becomes 0 0 plus p3 minus p2 p1 minus uh, p1 and then p2 here minus p3 so remember that uh, this is sb which means this equal to here this is p so this simply implies that we are constructing this as minus p tilde cross m tilde okay. and this stands for this one p tilde p tilde cross will be we have to change the sign so here the minus sign will appear this will become plus and so on so if u tilde be the desired torque okay so we can write u tilde equal to s p tilde times m tilde okay and we need to decide this in order to find out how much the charge on the various uh, cells or the plates is required so m tilde is your m in the vector notation we have written as cx qx times cx and so on okay. so this we can write as in the matrix notation the same thing will become qx qy qz and here you will have cx cy cz which indicates the distances between the various cells i am not showing you the an exhaustive analysis but uh, if we have a cell so it's a, and another cell here in this place so this is center to center distance this is cx similarly cy okay. so m tilde can be written in this way okay. and if you uh, i am not doing a formal change also from the vector notation i am just converting it to the uh, matrix notation you can use the notation we have developed earlier which is the indicating 
f b this is a vectrix and taking the basis vector here and then converting. So, unnecessary time gets wasted in that. So, you can just follow this approach. Okay. So, th this becomes S p tilde this is a skew symmetric matrix and you have here let us write this as uh, it will be better to write this in the form of d x d y and d z okay. on the left hand side this is the off diagonal terms are 0 this is the way of writing. So, this is q x q y and q z. So, capital D I am using for distance instead of c x. So, c x equal to d x c y equal to I am replacing it and uh, c z equal to d z. So, that it even indicates the distance. So, this becomes this is a diagonal matrix okay, d and this is a vector which is you can write as q tilde. Okay. So, s p d q tilde this equal to u tilde. So, this is the charge you need to decide these are the things which are fixed it depends on the v cross b. So, these things are not in your, in your hand. Okay. So, this part you can manipulate means you can keep changing with time and therefore, this torque you can generate. So, this gives you the q tilde equal to s p tilde times d pseudo inverse times u tilde. Out of this d is invertible. So, we could have also written it another way like uh, instead of doing like this you can also do the same thing. Let us first remove this part. So, this becomes s pseudo inverse p tilde times u tilde this will become equal to d q tilde. Okay. This is taken to the left hand side. So, I am writing it this way then take d on the this side. So, this becomes d inverse s pseudo inverse p tilde times u tilde. where s pseudo inverse p tilde already in the magnetic torquer case we have written this. So, it follows the same formula this is called the Moore Penrose inverse s transpose p tilde divided by p tilde magnitude the square. So, this will get reduced to this equal to q tilde. So, the if this is the desired torque okay, you require this much of charge. This is the charge vector. Okay, so, the available torque then T q tilde or T coulomb this can be written as as we have used the earlier equation this part we have broken up and this we have written as s p tilde and m we have written as d times q tilde. So, we need to replace here q tilde. So, t coulomb then becomes s p d s p tilde times d and then replace this q. So, q we have calculated here in this place d inverse s p transpose. So, this is d inverse s p tilde transpose okay, divided by p 
p tilde magnitude square and times u tilde. So, these together constitute an identity matrix Now, let us write p tilde divided by p tilde magnitude as sigma. Okay. So, then you will be able to write this as these are the unit vectors s sigma times s transpose sigma tilde times u tilde. So, you can you can see that the torque due to the charges it has got reduced into the same format as we have got for the uh, in the case of the magnetic torqueer this is exactly the same thing same part so this you can write as gamma sigma tilde times u tilde where gamma sigma tilde this is q symmetric matrix this is and this is so product of two skew symmetric matrix it remains singular so, this is the property of this matrix okay. and rest of the rest of the treatment it remains the same as we have done for the uh, magnetic torqueer. There is nothing no difference in this and that okay. only thing that there are two cases in which the torque is vanishing in the case of the Lorentz force one these are the two cases and while for the magnetic torqueer there is only one case. One case means m becomes parallel to v, here v becomes parallel to v that also creates trouble that the torque vanishes and v cross b also if it becomes parallel to m then also the torque will vanish. So, this is more problematic as compared to this one. Okay, so uh, and the proof for stability uh, controllability issue already I have discussed and the same controllability issue also applies here in this case mathematically and the stability issue I have not discussed I have not detailed here in the class. So, uh, I will upload material for that next week and there I will address the those issues which are related to the stability and the formula that will be used you can extend it to other places wherever the uh, gravity gradient is used. Okay. Okay, so, uh, we will uh, wind up this topic here in this place. And then we will start with uh, so we end here the large satellite attitude control using magnetic torqueer, and then we will continue in the uh, continue with the satellite attitude control uh, using the thruster in the next lecture.